morning. It's about uh, half past nine and I left Liesebotten and uh, heading now for the Prijkenstolen, another camping site over there. And uh, the traveling distance is uh, less than 200 kilometers. So it's not a very far ride today. If I do it on my ease, then it will be probably sort of three hours uh, to reach it. Plenty of time to pitch my tent again and uh, look around and try to figure out how that other camping site uh, works out. The surroundings here, the view is outstanding. Again, it's beautiful. Again, it's beautiful. I'm allowed to do 80 km an hour here, but as you can imagine, that would be a waste and also, well, quite hard on these bending roads. If I need to do 80, then I'm risking things I don't want to risk. So, easy as it goes. And it's beautiful. Absolutely. Something else that uh, I have to share with you because the Liesenbottom camping site, well, the camping site was perfect. It has everything you want to have as a tourist. So it was very well arranged, but it cost a fortune. It was a very expensive very expensive camping site which I can which I reckon because these bottom is sort of at the end of the world it's a one-way road and at the end you have Lisa bottom and it is well you can say it's a town but it's less than a town it's a couple of houses and nothing more it is mostly only that camping resort with a restaurant and a reception and a bar and so forth and that's the only thing you have there and nothing else so then you have to pay for it this morning I did uh, some kind of a breakfast over there I had just a coffee and a sandwich and I need to pay 23 euros for it it knocked my pens off. Okay, that sandwich was quite nice. It was not only a sandwich, there was a couple of things uh, with it. So, okay, great. The coffee was not that very special, but still then, 23 euros. It's uh, a shame. So, the rest of the days I hope to do that in some kind in another way. Try to uh, figure out if I can do some things cheaper because that's uh, that pricing. If I continue with that then I need uh, another mortgage on my house. So that's the only thing that um, yeah is a little bit a uh, little bit pity. But having said that, I'm now uh, driving towards uh, Prijkenstolen 
and look at the scenery. Look at the scenery. Ferry people over there because there's a quite a long, long pile, long queue of cars. Explain to me. Well, you are allowed as a biker to pass uh, through, put it on the on front of, uh, of the queue, and then you can on the boat because it's a very small boat and only six cars are can load on it because the capacity is quite low. So okay, right. okay, exciting. Okay, the Gloppedal, Gloppedalen, Gloppedal, Gloppedal Sura. Very beautiful rock formation which should be unique in the world. And the fun thing is that I'm coming from the other from the other end. Because my route towards uh, Prijkersdolen for today is not driving from this side but driving from the other side but the road was closed blocked so when I arrived there two hours back uh, I stopped at the road sign figuring out what to do and then a car coming up with uh, some people from uh, traffic control sort of yeah here it is again same thing from this side yeah 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 okay okay oh okay, that's pity road closed okay road closed well the fun thing is that same thing happened at the other end 
so I asked to those uh, people from uh, Traffic Control, very nice people, I said, well, is there a possibility for me as a biker that I, that I can slip through? Because in many cases, if something happened in the Netherlands like this, uh, stepping off, then you have the possibility to yeah, bypass it uh, because the bike is not that big. Well, <laughs> right now it is quite big, but um, m mostly then you can slip through. So I asked those people from Traffic Control, is there a possibility to do that? No, sir, you cannot because the, 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 rock, the, the road is blocked because of uh, rock avalanches. And uh, so the rocks are spread out everywhere on the road. And there are also very big ones on it also. So there is no way that you can pass it. But what you can do is drive around it, which I have done. So after two hours, I'm now uh, approaching it from the other end. Here I am, and again, Red block. Other bikers, let's see. Outlet free or not? Could be not. Probably. I'm not sure. Yeah, there are two outlets. Oh, great. I can do it here. Under the trees. Okay, okay. What to do next? I don't know. Put the tent up. Okay. <laughs> 